Now, welcome to Book World, The Great Escape. I'm CJ Peterson with my list back point the right direction. Co-host, author Michael Scott Clifton. Today, we have two special guests, not one, but two. Amazing ladies, Kelly Lynn Colby and Danielle McDonough. And we're going to be talking about authors and comic cons. Before we do so, Mike, how was your week? Well, it was great. This is, uh, you know, you're suffering from, uh, you know, cough, asthma, pollen, whatever, you know, that's... I finally, you know, I've been dealing with that since December, and this is the first week I've actually had my voice completely and haven't been coughing. But also today, um, I got a uh, an Instagram message from a person who had bought one of my books at a Comic Con uh, in Rogers, Arkansas, back in January, and it was the Janice Witch, and she said, "Man, I love your book. I'm going to give you a great review." And then she wanted to buy one of my bookmarks, which oh, we make custom made bookmarks for my books. So, you know, it's always as, 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 as we authors know, those uh, personal messages and reviews from people that, that love your books and, and give that feedback to you, you know, that's, you can't put a price on that. So uh, yeah, it kind of made my day and my week. Awesome. So what's next for you that's coming up? Okay, so in March, I'm going to the Boys State Basketball Tournament, which I've been going to here in Texas for since 1989. Got to see wow. some historic figures there. Shaquille O'Neal, he actually got in line next to me when he's a high school senior at a... Uh, no way. A, yes. Biggest human being I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> uh, in, real, you know, in, in real life, I've never seen one even come close to being that big. You know, you're, you're looking up. And you're pretty tall yourself, so, you oh, know. Yeah. He's only six. He was only like 17 years old. And his, my whole body probably didn't weigh as much as his leg. But anyway, uh, so COVID interrupted that. So my friends and I, you know, we're going back. We started up again uh, two years ago after COVID and we're going back this year. And in March, I'm going to speak to the Lions Club uh, here in Mount Pleasant about books. Um, All of a sudden we have a local we have a local authors organization here called Northeast Texas Writers Organization. And we've had uh, quite a few new members in the last six, six months to a year. And uh, a lot of things going on locally here that have never gone on before. People are all of a sudden, I, I can't explain it. You mean you, we have people in this town that actually write books that are authors? Yeah, they've been here for 40 years. So, but anyway, uh, a lot of opportunities. Yes, we're I know. Everywhere, we're everywhere. The glimmings, yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, and then uh, in April, uh, I'll be going to the Winsboro Book Festival and the uh, Longview Art Walk, which I try to do this hold quarterly. The Comic Cons, which we'll be talking about, uh, 95% of mine start in the summer and run through uh, December. So I don't do a lot in, uh, in the spring. So anyway, that's that's what's up with me. Well, uh, March is our first Comic Con of the season. We'll be doing Comic Conroe March 10th, 11th, and 12th in Longview Convention Center in Conroe, Texas. So I will be there. Um, you just kind of got to catch me because <laughs> I just, I run the Literally. floor. So I will be like a streak. There she goes. Girl grabber sort of deal. Or, hey, CJ, just yell. And I'll be like, I'm over here somewhere. Uh, find me take pictures, get it up online, have fun. Um, Well, also Texas Sisters Press is going to have a table there. So my sister is going to be there to run it. So she will be there with her books and my books and the Texas Sisters Press's books. So it's pretty exciting. Um, And then in April, we have the Chautauqua Festival. And then in May, we have Kilgore Geek End. Um, That's it for the moment that I'm sharing. Um, I am going to be able to cover... Fan Expo Dallas in June. I am like super, super excited for. I'm covering it for Magic Making Mischief. And uh, this year I'll be getting an autograph from Joseph Quinn. For those people who know Stranger Things, he's Eddie Munson. And Stranger Things is one of my favorite fandoms too. So (laughs) what about you ladies? Well, we'll be there at Dallas Fan Expo too. Oh, really? Yes. So we've got like three tables. We've got a huge thing set up. So we're really excited. Let me know where you are. Let me know where you are when That's you figure awesome. out where you're at. Or most yeah, as soon as they let us know, I'll let you know. So we're Hopefully. very excited. I'm Maybe. applying for panels too. So hopefully we'll get some panels. We got some last year, so that'll be fun. Which is great exposure, which That's we'll awesome. talk about in a minute. Danielle, what about you? Um, I'm not doing Fan Expo this year, uh, but 
I am doing the Arlington Comic Con in April, and there's a one called LitCon that I'm actually doing in March. So ne- coming up next month, uh, I do have a couple other events going on, a couple school events and stuff going on in March as well. So I've similar to uh, Mike, I'm not super busy in the early spring, but it's starting to pick back up as we get towards summer. So I'm looking forward to having lots of events and lots of stuff going on. Cool. Well, today we're going to be talking about authors and comic cons and what the two have in common. Well, all four of us that are here are actually, we're kind of geeks anyway, but we're Comic-Con people. Um, And there's kind of a certain breed to the Comic-Con crew for the authors, especially. Um, Either one of you ladies want to start off with that and, you know, what exactly makes a good fit for an author in a Comic-Con? Let's start with that. Well, first, you can't be scared of people. They're crowded. (laughs) There are a lot of people there. So I always say most of most writers are introverts, not not all of us, but most of us are. I don't know if you are, Danielle, are you an introvert too? Yes. Yeah. So and most of us are. This this is just who they are. I tend to be an obnoxious introvert, but I'm also an introvert. So it's very difficult for me to stay high energy all day. So um, the one thing you have to do is prep for it. So you have to make sure that you're high energy, you're ready for those people. I always say I just put on my author mask. This is my mask I put on for the people because I love my stories. I'm excited about them. And I know they will be too. So I just need to communicate that to them. Mm -hmm. So I can go back to the hotel and collapse that night. The next week, I can sleep all day on Monday. But until then, for this weekend, I need to be on. So that's the like very first thing you have to be. You cannot just sit there behind your, um, behind your, I wanted to say panel. Yeah, behind your table. Thank you. You can't just sit there behind the table and expect people to buy your books. You have to actually sell them to the people. Mm -hmm. And a Comic-Con hangover is a thing. Oh, for sure. (laughs) So it's it's like an emotional hangover. It's kind of like, uh, if you meet me in person, Mm -hmm. unless I'm at a Comic-Con, I'm usually painfully shy. Mm -hmm. Um, When I first started them, I would hide behind the table. My sister would just bring people to me. It was great. (laughs) Um, But now it's like we arm wrestle to see who gets out from behind the table. Mm-hmm. And get to have fun. And then they're fun. You get to know lots of people and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's kind of like certain genres that you should probably fit into to fit within the Comic-Con world. Daniel, do you want to go with that one? Sure. Um, so similar to like how sports draws a big crowd of people who like sporting events, Comic-Cons tend to draw people who are into more fandom type things. So usually fantasy, sci-fi, uh, young adult fiction, those are the tend to be the ones that people look for at comic Con and too. horror and mm-hmm. horror. Sorry. Yes, definitely horror. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a, that's becoming a much bigger genre too. Stranger things has actually helped that along mm-hmm. a lot. Yep. Uh, definitely gotten that to be more spotlight. Mm-hmm. So it's just kind of finding, you know, your people and your fandoms and knowing which ones to bring up to them. And like mention, like I'm dystopian. So if I'd say people, Hey, this is kind of similar like hunger games or divergent, it really strikes a chord with them. Cause that's something that's familiar and that they already like. Yeah, it's like for my um, Saves of Time trilogy, I say it's like Stranger Things minus the X, minus the Mind Flayer meets X Men. And they know exactly who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. But if you have somebody who's not like a sci fi fan, they're like, uh, I need a little bit more info. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it'd be safe to say that at Comic Cons, the people who attend there enjoy uh, engaging their imagination. Mm-hmm. And oh, for sure. um, because other genres, you know, fantasy, sci-fi, Dan, you mentioned all those uh, horror, great fit for comic cons, um, which brings up the question. I think maybe that was something else that you might've been leading up to CJ is what genres would you say, if you were being totally honest, aren't really a good fit mm-hmm. for a comic con? Well, I don't know. If I would say one is not a good fit, but mm-hmm. I agree with Danielle with the one she say are a good fit because they're, mm-hmm. What I will say about the Comic-Con crowd is they tend to be a higher percentage of readers than you get. Like, let's say you go hang out at the mall and try to sell books. Introverts, I mean. Well, not just introverts. There's plenty of extroverts there, but there are a lot, a lot of readers. Yeah. So, again, they like to use their imagination. They like Mm -hmm. to be creative. And, yes, they're consuming a lot of TV and movies. I do as well. Um, You know, they also do TV. But they're also consuming, and all of that consuming, they're also consuming books. Mm-hmm. So there's a much higher percentage mm-hmm. of readers at a comic con than there will be at um we've had pretty good success at like farmers markets but the percentage is tiny of readers compared to a comic con so point. that's the kind good of point. thing that, that you want to look at but i agree sci-fi fantasy and horror those are really the main 
and you need to know exactly where you are. Like when I said, oh, we have we have uh, fantasy uh, romance, and they're like, oh, we love romance. How spicy is it? Like you have to know exactly where you are, so they know exactly what they're looking for, right? So that's another thing too. Yeah, and it's like when they come to the table, a lot of times I'll ask them, I'll say, are you a reader? Because I want to know, are you a reader first of all? Because if not, then you might want to head down the row. Um, <laughs> the other question is always like, what do you like to read? So a lot of times if I'm at a Comic-Con mm -hmm. or a book show or something, I'll go around to the different authors and say, hey, what's your genre? Mm -hmm. So that way, if it's not one that I have, I can send them over because I'm not going to want to talk to them about my books if they don't match me. Right. What they she don't... said, Kelly, about getting out, and I guess that's what you're kind of following up on, CJ. When I first started doing these Comic-Cons, I just stood behind the table. Uh uh, I don't know if I'm an introvert, but I'm not someone that's going to rush up to you and shake your hand or, or something like that if you're a complete stranger. But mm -hmm. I learned that if you're going to sell books at a Comic-Con, if you want to sell a lot of books, a lot more than what you would normally sell, you do have to engage the people. Now, I would say conservatively, this is just for me. I do very well at Comic-Cons mm -hmm. and um, at least half or more of the books that I sell are people that would have walked by had I not said something to them. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying, CJ, hey, you like to read? Yeah, I, I do. Well, what's your genre? What do you like to read? 95% of the time, they're going to say science fiction, fantasy, horror, something like that. Mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, well, by strange coincidence, that's exactly what I write. Who would have thought? You know, but, but anyway, that's a very good point because if you don't try to uh, – engage the people are walking by you'll sell books but you'll miss half of half probably of the sales and the readers that you might have had if you just said a word or two to them mm -hmm. definitely and in in going with that too it's like you have to have conversations with them i know as an introvert that's a terrifying thought um but kelly's right you have to know what's in those books so for example we have the texas sisters press books I need to know what those are so that I can refer people to them. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Illness, illness gets us all. <clears throat> I know I'm trying. <laughs> so it's a good chance to practice your elevator pitch. Yes. On your books. Yes. And uh, you'll figure out when you get it right. Cause you'll start to sell more books. It's amazing. It really does work. Mike, Do you have a trick you Danielle you use? I'm sorry. Do you Mike? have a trick you use? Um, I actually, I give away bookmarks. I'm, people walk by, I have a bookmark for every different one book I have. And I'm like, hey, which one do you like the best? And get people to like stop and look at them and pick out a free gift. So for those that are watching that don't know, what is an elevator pitch? It's something that you can pitch your book to in the time the elevator gets from like floor one to floor six. So it needs to be quick. So they used to be like you'd get in the elevator with an agent in New York and you really need to sell them your book right now because once they get off that elevator, they're not going to talk to you again. That's how the whole thing started. An elevator pitch is not just for books. It could be for whatever the heck you're pitching. So that's, it needs to be short, sweet, down to the point and compelling. So they want mm -hmm. to hear more. But you know, I found, Kelly, I haven't done this long enough now to sort of get a feel to kind of people. Mm -hmm. Not Most of them, the elevator pitch, like you described, that's that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. But I've been able, I've, I've got to the point where I can tell that they want it more, you know, have you, then you give you, them you, more. Yeah. Yes, you can tell that there's some of, well, can you tell me a little bit more? And they're not going to say that, but you get that sense that that's, they want more of that. So uh, I don't know. If, quite if frankly, then they're already it. sold. So you better mm -hmm. actually have that book in their hand when they leave. If not, then you need to relook what you're doing because they're already sold if they're going to keep listening. Mm -hmm. If they want to know more, then they're interested. They're interested. Sell them now. Right, right. So some more. tips and tricks for those authors that are potentially going to be going to Comic Cons. How do you get like the word out? For example, like for mine, I have QR codes. So they can just click on the QR code and then they can like sign up mm -hmm. for my newsletter. Right, right. And you won't have to decipher handwriting. Mm -hmm. That's one. Any other tips that you guys can think of? Um, part of the reason I give away bookmarks is because it doubles as a business card, stuff, yeah. uh, has my website on it. So they can always find me and they can also, I tell them that they can read the first couple of chapters on my website for free. See if they like it. It's a, it's a little sample for them. 
Very good. Kelly? I like to decipher handwriting. I put out a sign-up list. <laughs> and I do that on purpose because half the time when people click, they're either not going to follow through, they're at a con, they're not interested, um, or they're they're going to um, not do it and just say they did, right? Or all these kind of things. But if they're actually interested enough to write down their name and email, then I've got them. So then I can, I then I have them. So I still do that. There are some things that just work better for me anyways, the old fashioned way. And, and that's one of them. I have a sign up list. It, it's a, surprising how willing people right. are to sign up for it, especially since you sign up, mm -hmm. I'm going to send you a link, you get a free book. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it makes a difference. Sometimes and, you can do like um, a giveaway where they have to right. put their name and their email address and they have to make it legible because you have to be able to. <laughs> yeah. the, the email list is, is uh, to me, it's what, like you're saying, Kelly, it's great. But you have it out there. And uh, they, uh, you know, 90% of the time I've found that you don't ask them. They just, they just go, they see it and they go ahead and they, uh, they write their name down. But like what, what uh, CJ is saying too, I've tried as well. Audiobooks, you know, you have, if you've got audiobooks, you can do free give, you know, you have free codes for 50 or more. You can ask for more if, once you've done that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, something like, hey, uh, would you like to sign up for a chance on a free audiobook? All you got to do is put down, you know, your name and email address. And I try to tell them because in this age of spamming, um, I don't send a newsletter out every week. You know, uh, you know, it's maybe quarterly or maybe, you know, it's not you're not going to be inundated with uh, with, you know, with, with newsletter after newsletter after newsletter. So uh, trying to make Who that has the time. I don't know how they do that. Right? Danielle, them, she's like, like, I don't know, me neither. <laughs> I tell them, I'm like, I don't spam. It comes out every other Friday at 10 o'clock. Otherwise, you hear nothing from me unless you email me. <laughs> yeah, I send out one once a month. I mean, I try really hard to send one out once a month. I'm like, I assure you, you're not going to be spammed by me. I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> I tell them almost exactly the same thing. I also say I won't sell their information because I don't know anyone who wants to buy it yet. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> there you go. That takes more energy. I don't have time for that. I'm sorry. This is all I could do. But that's a good point because we're talking about sales. Mm -hmm. at, at comic cons and we do want to sell books that's kind of the point but the thing to keep in mind is this is not a money maker mm -hmm. um, a comic con our only goal is ever just to at least pay for that table because breaking mm -hmm. even is a whole nother ball game especially when you're traveling like mm -hmm. we're going to jordan con in atlanta we go to dragon con in atlanta we go to superstars in colorado springs we go like so we travel all over so if you include travel in that it is really difficult to make it up through book sales mm -hmm. so talking about the lose that's why we're doing it we're doing it for that newsletter we're doing it to get those new fans this is a marketing tool mm -hmm. so you have to remember that too when you're doing this like how much am i investing what am i doing you have to look at what how many people buy books later after when you return from the con mm -hmm. what do your sales look like yeah, you know who has joined the newsletter who responds this mm -hmm. is a marketing tool exactly yeah, that's a very good point after a uh, comic-con a lot the ebooks versus the paperbacks same so one thing and then the other thing is a lot of times when they see you at multiple mm -hmm. they will more than likely come up and say hey i saw you at this which opens mm -hmm. up a conversation right. of hey do you know what i write do you know about my books let me tell you about my books breaking even is, is there. yeah breaking we need to as long as we pay for the table mm -hmm. what that tells us is it was worth it marketing wise there right. was enough people who came who were readers who were interested in what we had that this was a great place to market mm -hmm. so, so that's what we look for so i have a question it's it's a little bit humorous <laughs> so at your comic cons okay when you get a person i'm just asking how what y'all I, I i know what i do but when you get a person who comes up and who wants to talk but they're not interested in buying books, but they talk. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, people who were interested maybe inquiring about your books are, they get, a, you know, they're walking by because they see you're otherwise engaged. So these are not bad people, you know, they're genuinely, but they definitely don't have any, they're not any interest in buying books and they end up maybe telling you their life story. So how do you handle those kind of people? <laughs> they're there. Mm -hmm. Danielle? Do I take this one? Oops, sorry about that. No, you're good. Yeah. How? What? What do y'all do um, in that situation with with folks like that? How do you? Can you guys respond? hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Well, I'll tell you, for me, um, I never go alone. So I tend to be the primary I'm salesperson. Have to rejoin. Uh oh. We can still see her. That's okay, Danielle. I'm gonna go ahead and bump you out and you come on back in. I will say when when I go, first of all, I never go alone. So there are always people that want to talk and that's no problem. I mean, that's what we're here for. We're there to market. Um, sometimes I get people over that they're just out of money and they want to buy a book and they can't, right? They always join the mm -hmm. newsletter and then right, they sit and talk. Right, right. Um, and that's great. But like you said, people are passing by and I still, I need to market. And so I always at least have my husband with me, right? The, my partner in the company and I will hand them off to him and he'll take over. I'll be mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, that's awesome. You know what? Um, Zafo had that same problem. And then I could talk to the next person, right? And so that they, he will take over the conversation so I can then talk to more customers. Um, so we do the same thing. Just make sure you're not there by yourself. Mm -hmm. So you need a um, tag team. You need a tag we team. We tag team. Don't yeah. go by yourself. I mean, what if you have to mm -hmm. run to the restroom? I mean, you do not go. I've seen people go by themselves. Don't do it. Bring someone, even if my, like at uh, Comic Conroe, right? Because you have to be there during Friday and my husband's working. And so I bring one of my children along, right? You know, I have a friend writers that I bring along. Bring someone with you. Um, and then you can tag team. So you could just, you know, it is pushing them aside. I'm sorry. I'd talk to the next customer. And when you're done with that customer, you can always help the next one. But you have the same thing. You're talking to a customer, you're ringing it up, and then someone else is interested. You need someone to talk to them now. So you you definitely, definitely tag team. You need at least two people behind that table. Mm -hmm. Danielle, what do you do? Oh, first off, sorry about that. My camera was, my microphone was acting up. I wasn't able to hear you guys. Um, oh, I'm sorry. So I'm not, so I don't have the built-in uh, person to bring with me, but I usually try to bring a friend on the occasion that I can't. I use the bookmarks again, where I can still talk to someone and be like, oh, hey, would you like a bookmark? And try to like, you know, kind of move around them to a certain extent to just, you know, even that way, inviting them to even join our conversation if possible. And mm -hmm. that kind of also gives the people the hint, oh, she is working, you know, she's, she's trying to get stuff done. But I, I do like to listen to people. I like to hear people's stories. A lot of people like to ask about writing and kind of share their ideas mm -hmm. for what they right. want at a mm -hmm. book. And I definitely want to encourage that. So I try to be really patient, understanding, but also try to, you know, continue to give attention to everybody who walks by. Same. Yeah. And I tend to be there representing my publishing company, not just me as a writer. So mm -hmm. yeah, I get a lot of people who want to write, who also want to come up and talk. So, which is again, fine. I have no issue with that. Mm -hmm. It's just, I also need to market. So mm -hmm. yeah, we, we need to tag team it. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So do you have any advice for somebody who's an author who's considering doing this? If you could give them like one gold nugget, Kelly, what would it be? Well, if you've never done this before and you want to go out and you're nervous about it, find a fellow author who is local to the event and who wants to go too. share the table. Mm -hmm. So that way you can actually go. You're not by yourself the first time you're going together. You've got something going. You, If you are just tired and cannot talk anymore, the other author can talk about their books, right? And you should know each other's books. You can sell each other's if someone has to run to the restroom or go eat lunch. Go with a friend. Bring a buddy who is also a writer. So that you can just sit there and, and you can talk to each other too and, and and make it through in a way that's enjoyable instead of just forcing yourself because they told me I have to do this or I can't ever do this and I have to do this and I don't want to be here. And so by doing that, it kind of makes it more fun too. And networking's half half mm -hmm. the journey here. Yeah, that's the other one. Sorry, I have one more gold nugget. Good when part. you're there, make sure you go to all the tables and meet yeah, every other author mm -hmm. who's there. Yep. Because networking, this is not just marketing, it's also networking. And networking is half of your job. I don't care what your job is. That's not just writer. So go and meet every single author. Give them your card. Take their card. You know, get to know them um, so that you can see there might be some other resources that, that are available that you can offer them and they can offer you. In doing that, sometimes what I do is a book swap. So I'll try mm -hmm. like one of my books, I let them pick it. And then I'll mm -hmm. like Danielle and I have done that. Kelly and I have done, done that. Mike mm -hmm. and I have done that. Yep. And then what I do when I go back, Mm -hmm. home is my comic-con stash which includes yeah. those books so yeah. it sends it out to all my people that hey check this book out i got this book myself so you can also do some cross promotions that way well it's good to melly and i we've made some good friends mm -hmm. uh at these comic cons that live you know all over the place and we see them pretty regularly i'm sure that y'all probably have the same mm -hmm. and it's it's nice to touch base with other vendors and authors Mm -hmm. and be able to catch up with them it's it's uh it's part of the fun for mm -hmm. me you know of being at a comic con so yeah, I, would, I would recommend going to a small one first yes yeah yeah, yeah. it's okay. a lot to take in if you've never been to a comic con 
Just mm -hmm. I'm going to put that out there. It's a lot. Now, if you're a geek like me, I'm like, that was my place. These are my, I walked, I'm like, oh my <coughs> God, these are my people, <laughs> you know, and it's great. But if you've never been to one, it can be very overwhelming if it's your first one and if it's a big one. So I'd recommend to maybe go to a smaller one. Danielle, what advice do you have? You gotta leave your shyness at home. <laughs> you gotta talk to people, man. <laughs> um, you know, even if even if you don't have like bookmarks like me or you're, you know, you don't know what to say, you know, you can definitely compliment a lot of people wear costumes, you know, talk to them mm -hmm. about them, talk to them about their their clothing, their costume. Most of them have made it. A lot of them are really proud of them. That's a great way to open doors at Comic Con if you don't know what else to say. Um it's also a way to find out their genre because chances are they're not gonna be mm -hmm. wearing something that they don't like. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's just a great way to get the conversation started if you have if you don't feel comfortable being like, buy a book, be like, tell me about you. Mm -hmm. um, would you all say I was gonna say one more piece of advice is panels. Oh, um, yeah, a lot yeah, of times yeah. Comic Cons have panels. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of times there'll be like an author panel or there'll be like a multi-genre or a specific author type of panel. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a podcaster, if you're a publisher, if you're a blogger, if you know, you're an author, find out what these panels are and find out if you can get on them because a lot of times it's really good exposure. Plus it's still that networking and connecting because I know for a fact that Danielle and Mike and I didn't want a Tyler comic con, you know, and that's actually how I met Danielle. And then I met her later at a different one. Um, Mike and I connect. I can't remember how we even connected, but we did a while ago too. Kelly and I connected through a couple different areas and ran into other comic cons. It's like old home week, you know? So when you can find somebody that you connect with, it's like, Hey, these are my people. Mm -hmm. And you do a, a panel with them. It's going to help you to also open up more, especially if you're really shy. Yep. For sure. One the, the last thing I was going to, with the little time we have left is, uh, would you say, would you, would y'all agree? It's fair to say that not all comic cons are created equal. There are some comic cons that are better fit. Mm -hmm. And going back to what she said earlier, Kelly, some that would be great to go to, but you're not going to break even. Mm -hmm. And you have to make decisions based on, you know, the, the distance, the time and the, the type of traffic you're going to have. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that there's any magic and, and uh, you know, whatever y'all can add to this, but I don't know that there's any kind of magic bullet on that. You just have to, like with CJ, you have to start. Mm -hmm. And and then once you're into it and you've gone to several, you know, you kind of get the sense of what's a better fit for you than it is for others. So would you all agree with that, that you need to that you just, just don't write down and go to every single comic con. you got to pick and choose. Well, and, and if you have a bad experience, don't let that one kill the whole entire option. You know, something like, well, I had a really bad experience. Con con. OK, we'll try a different one. Obviously, mm -hmm. that one wasn't a fit for you. <laughs> you know, keep trying. You'll find it. You'll find your people. And look at the history of the con. If it's a brand new con, it's going to be a smaller crowd at first. But if you can get in early, right? So just can consider that as well. Right. Because there's this thing called returners. Mm -hmm. So if you are a returning vendor or artist, and that's the other thing, you don't have to have a vendor booth as an author. You can do an artist table, mm -hmm. which is usually about half the price of a vendor. Right, right. Mm -hmm. that's so, but when you're in on the ground floor of a lot of cons, then guess what? You usually have first dibs the next year around. So consider that too. Mm -hmm. Lots of things to consider. Lots of opportunities out there to explore. And you get to know some great people like the ones that are here with us today. <laughs> I know, Danielle, we haven't met. Apparently you have to go to the Tyler Con, huh? <laughs> That's right. There you go. It well, there, there's there's like location issues too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we travel a lot. It's fine. <laughs> it's all good. It's we'll get there. Um, but yeah, Kelly and I have done multiple cons, Dean and I have done cons, Mike and I have done multiple cons, and it's just, it's fun. Mm -hmm. um, and just relax and have fun. Don't be yeah. nervous. Yeah. Honestly, the best thing for me was the comic cons because I was terrified at the book shows. But mm -hmm. at a comic con, I'm like, okay, these guys are fine. Mm -hmm. You know, nine out of 10 of them are geeks. I'm a geek. I own it. That's not a derogatory yep. thing. Um, <laughs> why we write what we write exactly mm -hmm. um so they get you and that's the cool part of it is they, they get you mm -hmm. you know so yeah definitely branch out for it 
Um, so if you want to learn more about Danielle and her books, go to the legacy book series.com T H E L E G A C Y B O O K S E R I E S.com. I'm trying to catch it as it's going off. Um, we'll learn more about Kelly Lynn Colby. <laughs> <laughs> KellyLynnColby.com, K-E-L-L-Y-L-Y-N-N-C-O-L-B-Y.com. Um, next week we have, oh, hold on. That's the wrong one. Um, next week we have coming on, oh, Mike, do you know? So many exciting things. Uh, do we <laughs> say oh, this is producer, author, George. Ah, author, Christmas. producer, George Dismukes. Yep. So he's sent me multiple books of his. So we'll be talking to him. So you get kind of a really cool, different twist and view by talking to an author slash producer. Very so cool. we'll see you all for next week. In the meantime, thank you ladies for joining us today. And we'll see you guys at a Comic-Con. Bye. Bye.